Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So today we're doing a pick a card reading. We're using tarot. We have five options and the question we have is what is my authentic masculinity saying to me? And that is a question I've gotten from the comment section of this channel. And the question once again is what is my authentic masculinity saying to me? And we have five tarot decks here. The first is the Wildwood Tarot, the Druid Calf Tarot deck, the Starseed Tarot, the Grimoire Tarot, and the Bruegel Tarot. So you may pause the video here to make a selection, and you can go directly to the timestamp, which you'll find in the description area, and uh, you can go directly to your reading. All right. So I hope you enjoy your reading. Let's get into it. So for those of you who've chosen the first option, we're using the Wildwood Tarot deck, and we're asking the question, what is my authentic masculinity saying to me? Now you can interpret this in whichever way you'd like. You could interpret it as in what is your masculine, as in your divine masculine saying to you, or you can interpret it as what is your soul, the masculine aspect of your soul, or the other asp aspect of your soul, the polar opposite aspect of your soul saying to you. And so here we have the Queen of Vessels, which is the Salmon, the World Tree, and the Three of Vessels, which is Joy in this deck. And I think here we talk what the message is, the message that your authentic masculinity is saying to you, is that there needs to be a balance between the energies, the feminine energies of the softer energies, that of being firm and having boundaries, but yet being compassionate and kind and empathetic and wise as well because the salmon is wisdom right so it's about saying that there needs to be a balance between that and the joy that you have in your life and so the the it's this conjunction of being responsible and being kind to yourself being kind to others being compassionate and non-judgmental and being able to survive um within this divine wisdom uh, as well as being able to have a childlike joy which surrounds you and where you are able to impart that to others around you as well and where you're able to share that and not just stand alone uh, taking on this responsibility and just um, having this wisdom um, almost alone, almost by yourself. The Queen of Vessels here also refers to, um, well, the salmon. It refers to looking into your ancestral lines, looking at your karmic lines, looking at where things have um, gone in a particular direction, where there's been a will for your ancestors to go in one way, but you've been forced to go in another direction. And I feel here there's a need to be uh, to address that, to be able to address the trauma, the the pain, and the will that was intended. There's perhaps a, a need to be able to acknowledge that, to acknowledge this ancestral world, as um, and and the 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 intentions or the motivations of your ancestors, and ask for guidance as far as um, well in that direction. Ask for guidance, in, in that direction, I feel here there's a sense that um, you are not to give up with the, the Queen of Vessels, the salmon. It's almost like you need to. Uh, to move ahead and to be able to grant the will or grant the wishes of the will of your ancestors and to be able to see how you can correct whatever karmic um, patterns have um, ha that your ancestors have endured in the past. So perhaps you've, your ancestors were forced to remove or there were some kind of forced removals or a forced migration. And... Uh, there's a sense here that you need to look at where they actually wanted to go to and why they would have needed to be there and what is your connection to that space. And um, that is just one very, one small, tiny example of how this energy could be interpreted. But, um, but yes, looking at the will of your ancestors and how and what it is that they were wishing to impart upon you at this point. Now, we have also the world tree, and I feel that this card here is referring very much to completion of something, the ending of something, bringing to closure, bringing something round, you know, like you might have gone into this maze and having to explore various different places, um, perhaps spiritually or geographically, and 
or even just in terms of emotional um, or, or some kind of trauma perhaps, um, but you've gone through various experiences and you've collected them and there's a way out of this or it comes, you come out the way you began. And uh, I feel like there is a need in this lifetime for you to be able to bring things to closure, to be able to bring things to their natural end, to be able to do so gracefully, to be able to um, fulfill those the will perhaps of your ancestors as as shown in the first card, but also to be able to bring something to an end for yourself, to be able to work through something till you've come to an end, to have the stamina to be able to do that. I feel that's very important, especially for if you have the tendency to begin something and not bring it to its full um, closure. Um, and I feel here that to be able to balance that all, to be able to balance the gravity of the world tree, of the salmon, what you're looking at is bringing in a bit of childlike joy to add to it, to understand that you're still a child, um, regardless of how old you are. When you look back at your ancestry, when you look back at your family tree and see where you've come from, you are still a child and you have and your memory has lived only as long as you have. And this is something that will either continue through you, through your children, or will end with you. And there's a sense here that that is a theme for you at this point um, in terms of this card, uh, for, for what these cards have to offer. I feel here as well that um, this joy that's brought about, it's something that it's almost like um, you need to packet it, you need to figure it out, you need to find it, and you need to work at it. It's almost as if it's not that easy to be able to find that. And um, the message here is to be able to say, well, you need, you might need to nitpick in order to be able to find what it is that you're looking for in terms of the joy that you seek. Um, and you need to have that wisdom in the background, you need to be able to have that knowledge of being guided by your ancestors, of, of being um, watched over by your ancestors, and to be able to, once again, as I mentioned earlier in the reading, to be able to balance that responsibility and compassion and almost that sense of being of doing the adult aspect of the work with being the child that still enjoys the innocence, and the joy, and the, the looking forward to something, the, the that first experience of being able to do something and the and the wonder that comes with that there's a balance that needs to be created between that perhaps the responsibility that weighs you down with the wonder of life i think also here there's a sense of uh, being able to bring all of this together and and once again referring back to the world tree to be able to bring it to a certain ending, a natural ending, a, some kind of closure where you are able to support yourself in a way that you perhaps haven't been able to do so before. There's also a sense here with this world tree um, that there are different seasons. You know, they're the different colors represent different seasons uh, of the tree, and I feel that um, this is the life, your life work this is how you need to to this is these are questions or this is this is the advice that you're going to need to have in your life it's very much for me the theme of this these three cards is about balancing that responsibility that gravity of that soul responsibility and that ancestral connection with the joy and the wonder of what it means to be a singular soul or an individual soul just being in this world just enjoying and being able to partake of all the physical um, sensations and the material aspect of this world. I also feel here that um, it's important to integrate people into your life that will be able to in help you inculcate these values in you rather than people who are going to not be supportive of that. And so especially when it comes to the joy, especially when it comes to 
working that wonder into your life and the best is not having lost it at all but if you need to work it back into your life again then be able to um, keep people in your life or rather help um, surround yourself with people who are able to help you with that and and support that aspect of your life all right so i hope that has been helpful and i hope that these messages have actually contributed and assisted you in some way and that you have um um yeah a very blessed time ahead blessings abound from kismet rising and for those of you who've chosen the second option here this is the druid craft tarot now uh, we are asking the question what is my authentic masculinity saying to me what does my authentic masculinity want me to know? So here we have the Five of Swords, we have the Eight of Swords, and we have the Two of Wands. And I feel here that the message that's coming across to you is, uh, firstly, not to live in the past, not to live in your head, not to spend so much of time thinking about how you've been done wrong uh how you could potentially be the victim of somebody or how you could potentially be the one who's won in a situation where you've been treated or you think you've been treated unfairly there's it's not a competition i feel like the the the, the message here that comes across quite clearly is that if you do think about th things as if they are a competition if you're treating another perhaps as if there are somebody that you need to get the better of or somebody that's perhaps done you wrong and you need to show them how they've done you wrong if you need to if you feel the need to um, force justice in your opinion what is justice and um, if you feel the, the need to force that upon somebody else then you're going to find yourself um, kind of um, in a in some kind of mental distress where you're not going to be able to find it easily it's easy sorry to free yourself you're not going to find it easy to be able to come out of this it's as if you're being you're retreating into a cave and um instead of being able to go ahead and get out of it it's you keep retreating into it until you come to the back of it and the end of it and then it's very hard for you to go forward again and to remove yourself from that situation because you've started to believe a lot of the things that you've been thinking or saying to yourself i think the message here is also that uh, try not to um tell yourself things that might not necessarily be true try not to deduce things without knowing the other side of the story or without seeing the other perspective i feel here that there is a need and i think this is the most important aspect of this card there is a need here to be able to work in partnership with someone to be able to uh, make things work and in to be able to work in a dynamic partnership to be able to work in a way that allows you to both create something and to be able to grow something together and putting aside all um, negative or sort of um, competitive values and ideas but rather work together on something to be able to create an outcome that is desired I feel here that uh, the message or this authentic masculinity is talking about how you can um, you can be masculine without feeling that you need to cheat your way into it, or rather not be masculine, but rather be able to uh, interpret the the divine masculine, which is part of all of us, in a way that is not trying to tread on that divine masculine, in a way that it's um, honoring the divine masculine as well and not um uh, you know blaming it rather or or forcing it into some kind of submission because if you do that then you're going to find that you are surrounded by um your own mental distress or your own emotional distress because you're going to have found that perhaps you've taken the wrong path or you've gone too far down a certain path and that you can't turn back from it and so there is a need to be able to start thinking about start dreaming about start envisioning how it is that you could potentially create something together how it is that you can come together uh, even if you don't feel like you have anything in common and to be able to um, to make things work now I know that in my readings I tend to be quite specific once I've started to read 
as if I'm reading for a particular person, and this might not necessarily resonate with all of you. But I, I ask you uh, to kindly look at how this can apply in your life, um, and apply the examples I'm giving you or the the analogies that I'm presenting uh, to your life without you know using the pronouns or the or the actual circumstances that I'm presenting and see how it could apply to you in some other way. But here I feel like, it, so what I'm trying to say is that if there isn't somebody necessarily that you're dealing with, perhaps it's an institution, perhaps it's the government, perhaps it's um, the world order that you're fighting against and that you need to show something or you need to present something of yourself. And I feel that here you're going to find yourself just really downtrodden, beaten up in a way, and just really um, not being able to free yourself from that situation, even though there may be possibilities to do so. So I think the what is what is presented is this Two of Wands card here, which shows me that there is a potential to get something to work, to be able to work hand in hand with something, to be able to um, come off whatever disgust you might be harboring and be able to say, okay, well, I'm going to meet this halfway. And they might, on a moral ground, you might not be able to do that. You might feel that it's, you're unable to do it. But just for your own mental well-being, you are going to need to be able to find that kind of um, cooperation in some way or a compromise, as it were. And to be able to, to be yourself and to be able to still honor yourself but at the same time be able to say well you know what we're going to leave behind whatever battle we have had whatever war we've had whatever anguish that, that there's been and we're going to see how we can come together and move things ahead and and that requires quite a lot you know that requires forgiveness it requires trust it requires being dedicated to a particular outcome that you might not always feel like working towards and so I feel like here, that is the message here. It's about being able to work together to be able to come to a, to one outcome that is going to be beneficial for all and uh, beneficial for you, for them, and for the world altogether. All right, so that's the message that I think that um, these cards convey and that's what your authentic masculinity is saying to you. So I hope that helps you and I hope that it's been a a pleasant reading for you and I wish you all very well. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've chosen the third option, we're using the Starseed Tarot and we're asking the question, what is my authentic masculinity saying to me? And so you can interpret this in many different ways. You can um, interpret this as your, what it, does the divine masculine have to say to you? Or you can interpret it as in what does the polar opposite aspect of my own soul saying to me? Okay, or what is the, the masculine in me saying to me? So let's go ahead. Here we have um, the five of orbs, we have strength, and we have the three of orbs. And when I look at these cards, I feel like there's a call for you to find your strength and to be able to wear that strength on your sleeve, not to be holding back on your strength, not to be um, subduing whatever um, expression of strength that you have. It feels to me here that that not only are you perhaps feeling like you're juggling um, with what you have at hand, but that there is a lot going on. There's a lot in the air. There's a lot that is undecided or that still needs a place. You still need to find a place for a lot of things, or it needs to still be a resolution for quite a lot of these things. And there's the sense here that um, in order for you to be able to find that solution, you need to come in with a, a sort of fiery um, energy, a fiery masculine energy, something that's just going to be quite decisive and quite primal, quite um, instinctive. And you're going to come in and make a decision and that regardless of what the consequences are of that it's going to be the right decision for you to make so it's it's like uh, others will see it as if it's a lightning strike or something that is quite uh, dangerous but uh, this needs to be done in order to bring a resolution to this matter that's at hand so I don't know if you're dealing with one particular matter whether there are lots of different matters at hand 
um, that you are trying to deal with or lots of different decisions perhaps that you're trying to make. But here, the suggestion is that you go at it quite abruptly or quite aggressively, in fact. Not abruptly, maybe, but aggressively. That you are quite, as I said already, decisive. That you go in there and you make, you take action in a way that is not take, including any hesitation, that is not with any doubt, that is just, you know what you need to do. And you, you're just going to go in and do it. And I feel that in order to get in touch with that, with, with what it is that you need to do, you need to just go back to what it is that you truly desire uh, without thinking about what others are going to think about that or, or how it's going to affect the other people or how it's going to affect um, what will happen later. You're not you don't need to overthink it too much. You need to actually just act on what it is that you desire or what it is that you are driven to do, all right? So, you know, obviously I'm not advocating that you do anything that's morally uh, harmful to another person or to yourself, but um, here, with using the, the correct amount of discretion, you are advised to take a, a quite a, a strong action, an action that's fueled by strength and by drive and by... Um, a sort of um, knowingness that accompanies that. Uh, it's also um, showing me that regardless of what the, the immediate consequences of that are and how that is perceived, that the long-term benefits of that are going to be good and that it needs to happen. That needs to happen. It almost there needs to be this cutting through of this energy, this breaking of this energy in order to be able to uh, fulfill what is des what is necessary so it's it's like there is a, a need to um, to yeah just break through the old stale energy and bring in something new uh, usher in a new beginning but doing so in a way that might uh, be the equivalent of you know the tower and the tarot which is like dropping everything to the ground or things happening quite suddenly or things, people perceiving things to come out of nowhere and just uh, toppling, you know. But it's going to have a long-term good effect. It's going to bring peace upon the world or upon your situation in the long term. So let me just give you some concrete examples because here I feel like I'm being very abstract. Um, I think here the if if you were like considering perhaps buying a home or or moving to a new home and taking a new job and um and and you're worried about you know leaving things behind like these you know two balls at the bottom here on the five of orbs i like leaving things behind um then i think what's required for you is to be able to just take a decisive action regardless of what is going to um be the consequence so go ahead you know, take that job, do the move that you have to do, and don't worry about what you're leaving behind. And it will all be fine in the end, you know. It will be a huge crackle, it will be a huge uh, change, and it will cause quite a lot of surprise or a stir. It will cause a stir, and it will be something that will um, raise eyebrows. Um, however, it is something that is necessary, and when you and, and and when you look back at it, it's you're gonna find that it was the right thing to have done. It was the right decision to have made, and um, it's uh, it's necessary to take this great action. Um, I also feel here with with this five of orbs that if you've not been able to complete certain projects, and you want to leave them behind, and you uh, have some. Um, concern about that, that you need not be concerned, that it's okay to leave some things behind, it's okay to leave things unfinished um, in order to move ahead as long as there's progress being made and you are being able to uh, forge ahead in a way that is going to ultimately benefit you in the long term and those around you as well. Sometimes leaving behind something right now doesn't necessarily mean that you'll leave it behind forever. Perhaps it's some things that you can pick up later in your life or at a different stage of your life. And um, or sometimes, you know, it's okay to leave some things uh, started and, and incomplete in order to be able to create progress and to move forward. The orbs in these readings, the orbs, as in the five of orbs and the three of orbs, they refer to something that's material. They refer to something that's worldly. Uh, 
Uh, so it could be about money, it could be about material resources, it could be about property, it could be about anything that has to do with what is real. It's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have something to do with relationships or uh, with or the actual interactions of the relationships or the relationship dynamics. Um, it rather has something to do with the material aspect of perhaps relationships or um, whatever the context is. And so it's a more earthly, um, it's, it's referring to what is more earthly about this. And um, I feel here that um, it's however it is impacting you, that you are going to need to uh, reconsider your, what is, you know, your earthly world, your material world, your worldly possessions. You might need to reconsider what you do with them, or you might need to reconsider how you manage it, or how you acquire it, or whether you put it, I feel here like it's almost like somebody is looking at everything that they have, and they've decided, okay, I'm just going to put everything in storage, and I'm going to go and set off and do something completely different, and I'll revisit this later. Like, that's one of the other uh, feelings I get from this. Like it could apply to you in, in a million different ways, but here those are like two scenarios that I've just um, provided you with that it could uh, it could apply to some some of you. Um, there's another sense here at which there is um there might be some degree of disappointment or lack in, of faith in oneself as far as um, accomplishment is concerned, and um, and then. The um, the advice here is to just, you know, tear yourself away from that and go back to the drawing board and just start all over again. Just start off at the foundation level, start off at the planning level where you are able to actually set things in motion again um, because you have re-planned it or you've re-strategized it and it's going to work out uh, so much better. So that is the you know some of the other um, meanings of this layer uh, of cards. I think that ultimately, um, what it's talking about, what it's the the bottom line of any of these scenarios is that it's asking you to step out of your comfort zone and take radical action in order to be able to effect an outcome that might not necessarily mean. Um, uh, something it might on the surface not necessarily look good for others but it will be good for others it might look as if you are going backward but in fact you are going backward in order to go forward and to give yourself a, a leap of energy to go forward again and so it's like um, it's it's something that you know you need to do that's not very comfortable for you to do it, it tears you out of your comfort zone and so that is the bottom line of this it's what is your masculinity authentic masculinity saying to you it says well stop lingering around the disappointment or the um the the, the stale energy that might have accumulated around certain things or projects or spaces and move towards um creating a radical new energy where you are blasting through and and creating a new uh, world in a way and and you know when you look at it from above or from afar it's there's going to be a, you know a light at the end of the tunnel there's going to be this um this peace that settles upon it all and i feel that ultimately there is a good outcome to whatever you are asking for yourself specifically and i hope that has been a good reading for you i hope that has resonated with you on some level and that um yeah and that you can take away something uh from this and i wish you all a very uh, blessed time ahead and blessings abound from kismet rising and for those of you who've chosen the fourth option here, we are asking the question today, what is my authentic masculinity saying to me? And so you could uh, take that in the context that what is my divine masculine saying to me? You could just take it in the context of what is the other aspect of myself or the polar opposite aspect of myself or the masculine of myself saying to me. So we, here we have the Queen of Pentacles and we have the High Priestess. And we have the King of Pentacles. That's really quite an interesting combination of cards. And I would say here that it's quite a powerful combination of cards. Um, like the previous reading, it's dealing with Pentacles, with what is material and what is 
worldly possessions, um, what has to do with what is on this earth as opposed to what is in your mind or what is um, in terms of your emotions or, or what has to do with the spirit. Although the card of the High Priestess is asking you to bring it all together, I feel here that what this is calling for is a balancing of energies of the feminine and the masculine, but with a good dose of um, a spirituality or an access to that which is divine, that which is universally um, divine, or, or what one might refer to as God. Um, it's almost like there is a... Um, uh, they, they, it's almost like they're asking you to look at the, the the Queen of Pentacles and look at the softness that she brings and the leadership that she brings and the power that she has um, in direct relation to what the, the King of Pentacles brings and the how sturdy his authority is as opposed to her authority and to be able to splice this in with a good dose of um, intuition with the goat good dose of wisdom to be able to bring it all together in a balanced form and to be able to understand that the actions that you take and the um, the the decisions that you make have not just to do with that which is earthly and material and is not just with regard to wealth or or material things such as property or whatever it could be but it also has to do with um it, it also has to have some kind of spiritual root. It needs to be grounded in something that is connected to the divine. And I feel that this card is asking you to integrate that divine into your, your worldly um, actions. Uh, so whatever you're busy with in your daily life, you, it's almost like it's asking you to bring that divinity into every action. You know, And one way of doing that is by... Um, uh, feeling gratitude. Gratitude is a real shortcut to accessing that divine emotion and that divinity into, you know, it's like a shortcut to that energy. So I think here, uh, if you are able to, to work into your life, that wisdom, that intuition, that, um, that reticence almost that is required from the high priestess, um, and her energy, um, her energy is very much about this quiet, closed, um, not closed completely, but quiet, um, reticent um, divinity and and wisdom, and a very highly um, acute um, psychic energy, and it's about you know perhaps. Um, looking at what you're busy with at work or in your studies or in your just in your life, even you know, even if you just uh, stay at home, um, or you are stay at home mom or dad, and and you just doing something that is um, not necessarily interacting with other people on a on a regular basis. This is asking you to look at every situation, every little situation, and intuit. What is required here? What is required as I do what I need to do in my house, my household? What is required as I drive or I'm taking public transport and I'm attending an event or I'm going somewhere? What is required from me in terms of my my wisdom, my own psychic energy? Can I tap into that universal consciousness of wisdom and be able to extract information from that in order to be able to balance my worldly life better and I think that is the crux of this particular reading it's basically saying that this is the way in which to um, to be able to um, to bring the balance into your life like that's what your masculine your authentic masculinity is saying to you that everything needs to be grounded in your intuition in your in your I use this word a lot now, into your divinity, into that which is godly for you, to that which is wise for you and what is necessary for you to be able to understand the significance of what you're doing. And it's almost like you need to uncover a layer of significance for your, um, for your 
um, uh, for whatever it is that you do in your life. Now, it's not giving me a very specific things here. I feel like the, it's just got to do with your, your daily life, actually, for most of you. For some, it might have to do with a particular business adventure that you are embarking upon. Or it could just be your job or your profession, your career. It, um, it could be something that is, um, that, that you are seen to be, where you are seen to be in a position of power, authority, and where you're holding some kind of, um, a, um, leadership position and asking and, and the, uh, advice here is to bring into that your, your intuition, you know, uh, rule justly and um, listen to your your intuition, listen to you, that divine energy that's trying to tap into you and, um, and that's waiting for you to kind of open that door so that it can flood in and infuse your life with that which is uh, just. So I think that is the the most important message here of these cards. Another way to read this is that if you are in some kind of difficulty in terms of your work or some kind of, um, you're going through some kind of challenging uh, uh, situation in terms of your studies, your work, whatever it is, um, it's almost saying, well, if you're feeling like you're despairing and you just don't know what else that you can do, um, or if you just don't know how to go forward any longer, then take some time out and pray and actually ask for guidance from um, from the other energies or from higher up. Um, and so that is also a, a way uh, in which you can transition to the next phase of your life or that you can make progress in your life. It's talking, um, it's almost, there's also a feeling here or one of, some of you might resonate with this, that you've come to the end of your tether in terms of one actual phase of your life in, uh, and that you need to move on to the next and you don't know how to be able to do it. And the answer here is to be able to infuse it with the divine wisdom, to infuse it with your intuition, to go inward, to hear what you have to hear, to use the resources and the knowledge that has been passed down from generations and that is available to you, uh, whether it's in the form of books, whether it's in the form of advice from the elders in your community or in your family, or whether it's just from going to a guru or a teacher and asking them to give you the 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 the, the, the knowledge that you require that you seek, or showing you how to go about finding it. So that is um, one of the other meanings of this. Um, this this row of cards here i think ultimately this is a good reading and this is not something that you need to be concerned about it's just simply saying um balance your life with that which is spiritual balance your material world with that with that world that is um the spirit world and uh, see then what will be the effect of it and see whether then you'll be able to govern or rule or manage uh, or lead better than you have been able to uh, until now. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this has been a valuable reading for you and I hope that you have been able to take something away from it uh, at least. And I'm wishing you all a very blessed time ahead and blessings abound from Kismet Rising. And for those of you who've uh, chosen the fifth option here, we are asking the question today, what is my authentic masculinity saying to me? And there are a few ways in which you can interpret this. You can ask, uh, what is the divine masculine saying to you? Or you can simply ask, what is the masculine aspect of my own soul, my own spirit saying to me? What is my polar opposite saying to me? And you can read this in whichever way you'd like. Um, so the cards that have come out for you here are strength, the fool, as well as the Knave of Pentacles. Now, I feel here that um, this card, the Strength card, has come up quite a lot um, for um, for this reading, um, these readings that I've done. And it's very interesting that you get this straight on, you know, and the combination of Strength and the Fool is quite an interesting one because it's talking about having the strength to be the Fool, having the strength to be able to give up things to be able to let go of responsibility, having the the courage to be able to um, 
to look at things from a different perspective and having the courage to step out of your your comfort zone to be able to access the world in a different way having the courage to be able to start all over again if need be um having the courage to be vulnerable and to be um even allow yourself to be naive within a particular context of things and just to be able to forge ahead with trust and with hope rather than to um, articulate and to uh, plan every step of the way and to strategize every step of the way. It's being able to uh, use strength, not in terms of force, but to use strength in a different way, in a more subtle way, in a way that empowers you and gives you the confidence to be able to do what is necessary uh, so that you can take action or you can begin taking action. And I feel that here it's almost like um, it's almost like there's this it's, uh, there's a few things that come up, so I'm just going to mention them all and you can tell you can take what resonates with you and what doesn't. One of the things that comes up is that you are trying to be somebody that is expected of you and you're trying to do everything the right way and or the way that is considered to be correct. And what's actually happening with that is that um, you are not being true to yourself. And so the cards here are saying, well, then in that case, just have the strength to be able to step away from that, have the strength to be able to walk away from some of those responsibilities that you've taken on, which give you um, some degree of status or some degree of, um, of standing in your community, but or in your family or amongst your people. Um, but, you know, just step away from it and allow yourself to start anew because maybe you need to take a whole new direction or allow yourself to come at the same problems or the same challenges or the same work that you're doing or the same issue, whatever it is, from a new perspective, from a perspective that would be otherwise considered to be um, perhaps idiotic even or just something that is um, not considered to be um, elegant in, in a, your situation but something, uh, a perspective that is far different and it doesn't need to be unfounded. It doesn't need to be um, foolish, you know, even if the word card is called a fool. It doesn't have to be silly. It can actually be something that can come in and be able to help you. But being able to have the courage to even choose to do that is almost impossible once you've been situated in a particular state state in society or in a particular class of society and how do you go about doing that how do you go about unlearning certain things in order to be able to be free again to be able to allow yourself to um, search your mind to find if there's anything else that is there that could lead you in a different direction so that you can actually find the courage that you ultimately need which is required here in the Knave of Pentacles, to be able to begin something new, to be able to start something new, to be able to start it new with a, a kind of um, impetus behind you that's going to help you go to your success or lead to your success. And I feel that that's what's missing here. There's this impetus that's missing um, to be able to begin something new. And so that's what they're saying here as far as the strength and the fool is concerned. Just um, work on on uh, your own strength, work on your inner strength rather than the strength that is needed to be portrayed outside of you in terms of um, perhaps the uh, control that you need to have over a particular situation and um, and look at what is truly important and what how can you cut down to the basics in order to be able to achieve something in your life uh, or to be able to see something new again. How can you, you know, if you've become a bit jaded, if you've been doing the same thing over the years, um, and you've become a bit jaded in your world view or in the way in which you approach things, then it's time to be able to take those jaded glasses off and to be able to look at the world anew again. And But but then you need to be able to allow yourself to do that. And I feel that the strength card is very much about that. Will you allow yourself to do that or not? And so uh, what is your authentic masculinity saying to you? Well, I feel like in many ways it's asking you to understand what your what masculinity really is you know masculinity is not just uh strength in its radical form or it's in its aggressive form uh, but rather a strength in its reserved form in a manner that is allowing you to be free enough to be yourself to be free enough to be able to walk away 
from society's expectations from you to be able to find what is true to you and what are your own true expectations of yourself. And, um, you know, and that is going to help you to be able to kickstart whatever it is that you need to do here that is being shown in the Knave of Pentacles, because it shows me here that you are trying to do something, that is, there is something that's on the wings that you're waiting to do. But in order to do that, you need to have a particular realization. And that realization is going to come when you allow yourself to, um, to look at the world differently or to look at whatever your situation is differently. So I think that is basically what is um, what is being spoken about here. Um, I feel also that um, the strength that you, that you require is all within you. It's nothing that you need to seek from outside of you. It's nothing that you need to um, ask for. It's something that you have within you. You just need to tap into it. It's something that you just need to let allow to let let it out. You know, sometimes holding onto something too tight can um, devalue your strength and can make it weaker. And so, where are you holding on too tightly or too you know you're in too much of control? Maybe you should just let it go a little bit. And so there comes the strength. The strength can kind of find its way out again. Um, and develop itself again. It's almost like there's this lack of self-esteem that's here that needs to be addressed. And the the way to do it is to not follow the rules, the conventional rules, I would say, but rather find your own rules, make your own rules for yourself in terms of how it is that you need to access your strength and how it is you need to portray your strength and the way in which you'll go about uh, being in this world um, with with the regard to how people will view you and not um you know ignoring that people will look at you differently if you choose this path but are rather saying well that's okay and I, i'm not going to care that that much anymore because it's not that important to me and there is something that i really need to get started there's something that i really need to move ahead with and in order to do that i'm going to need to redefine who i am and my outlook and so that is what um, is the advice that's given here. And so I hope that has answered your question. I hope that has been of um, value to you. And I hope that um, you're able to do what it is that you need to do, that you're able to kickstart this project and that you are able to find um, the fool in yourself and let go of that um, rigid control that might be stopping the fool from coming out. I'm not saying every single one of you has that, but for some of you, it may, may resonate. All right, so uh, I'd like to wish you all a very blessed time ahead, and I hope once again that this reading has been valuable to you or worthwhile for you, and um, I wish you much success in your life and uh, well-being and blessings abound from Kismet Rising.